All right, let's talk about the Chiefs' secondary ranking. According to the good old folks at PFF, the Chiefs battle for quarterback spot number three. Take a look at a Chiefs receiver getting national media attention who is also fighting for a roster spot and much freaking more. But first, how about those? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, a.k.a. the Bald, Ballsy, Beard Man, or sometimes known as Roger Goodell's Red Bearded Chauffeur. <laughs> and I do daily news about the Chiefs and the NFL overall, so make sure to sub if you're new and hit that like button if you find this TikTok even a little bit funny. Just in about yeah, you know, we lost Tyree, kind of sucks, man. But hey, man, we got Juju, baby. You know, he's a baller. Look at Juju over there, man. Not gonna lie, that TikTok of Mahomes was freaking gold. You got the no look pass, then you got Juju dancing for TikTok on TikTok. <laughs> it was so good. Job well freaking done. And let's get into some player news via their social media channels because we have Chiefs players all around the globe right now and staying very busy here this offseason. Shane Buchel could be seen putting in some work, and then he and Mahomes are working out with trainer Bobby Stroop and doing this pull thing to see who can generate more power, and from the looks of it, it appeared that Mahomes was able to generate a wee bit more power, and Bobby confirms it when he showed both of their machines. Buchel's peak power was 1,081 watts, while Mahomes had three more total watts at 1,084. So there you go. Mahomes pulled three more watts than Shane, nearly losing his starting job, but thankfully was able to maintain it. Oh yeah, and here's a clip of Mahomes marching on this box thing, which is kind of cool. And then here's a picture of his son, in case you guys forgot who it was. CEH could be seen showing off some social media production day footage of him catching the ball, spinning it, and showing the camera that it's an NFL-sized ball and proving that even though he's a small man, he can still do big things in life. Juan Thornhill, I believe, is still in Greece, and now he's just showing off. This view is unreal. I did DM him asking where this is so I can take my wife here one day, at least before we die of old age. So if he responds, I'll certainly let you all know. Cornell Powell showed a clip of the last dance he got with his wife at their wedding before showing off their passports, which I'm assuming means it's honeymoon time in some nice undisclosed for now location. And it looks like he will be returning from said honeymoon and ready for a football camp on July 9th at J.H. Rose High School in Greenville, North Carolina, in case y'all wanted to know. And speaking of football camps, it looks like Isaiah Pop Pacheco had a camp of his own in Vineland, which makes sense because he has the keys of the freaking city now, so he can do as he pleases there. This was the third annual pop camp. As you can see, kids of all ages there. Some lucky kids got his Chiefs jersey signed. Jealous. And here's a nice car in the background of this photo. This kid looks afraid to catch the football. They're teaching this kid to hit tiny red men. And then Pacheco can be seen here tying this kid's shoe. What a nice guy. And since I mentioned that Pacheco got keys to his city recently, it's worth mentioning that last week, Trey Smith... Our right guard stopped by Jackson, Tennessee's town hall to swap a signed jersey in exchange for a key to his city. And it seems to me like keys are being handed out everywhere these days, just like Oprah did back in 2004. Two, three. Get Chief safety Justin Reed shows us his dope photo of him catching a football, then another one of him tossing one up to cover one eye and confirm that he, like most people with money, is part of the Illuminati. He also confirmed that he got his wisdom teeth removed recently, which I think was an unexpected procedure that had to happen. So prayers for that. And then I also see he shared this photo a couple weeks ago of him running in red and gold. Nice uniform, looks nice. But the funny part to me is the Chiefs channel commented on this saying, let's ride. So my question is, are they being serious or are they subliminally trolling Russell Wilson? Because I'm here for it if they are. Broncos country. Let's ride. Let's ride. Anyway, let's move on. PFF recently took a look at the 2022 NFL secondary ranks for each team. And at least in this article, if this is how the Chiefs end up faring in 2022, I'm not 100% mad at it. The author of this article puts the Chiefs in the second tier of five and lists them as 14th overall, at least for right now on paper. The listed starters are cornerbacks Legereus Sneed, Rashad Fenton, Trent McDuffie, and then safeties Juan Thornhill and Justin Reed. 
and what they have to say about the Chiefs is actually specifically about Legereus Sneed. While he's been overshadowed by bigger names on the Chiefs roster, Legereus Sneed deserves some credit for his play. Since entering the NFL, he's had arguably the best start to his career of any cornerback from the 2020 draft class. While being asked to move between outside and slot cornerback, depending on where he's needed, he's been excellent through two seasons. He made the second most defensive stops of any cornerback in the league last year. Well, that's right, so let's freaking go, Legereus Sneed. That is amazing return on investment, aka ROI or ROI, especially for a fourth round draft pick. Sneed is the man. And if you guys are curious about the rankings of the rest of the AFC West, they rank the Raiders secondary as 29th overall in the tier labeled serious flaws. Well, yeah, flaw number one <laughs> is that it's the Raiders. Meanwhile, both the Broncos and the Chargers were ranked higher than the Chiefs. The Broncos listed as 12th overall, and the Chargers are actually ranked pretty high, 8th overall. The addition of cornerback J.C. Jackson is certainly helping with that ranking. So there you go. Raiders secondary ranked 29th, Chiefs at 14, Broncos at 12, and the Chargers at 8th. And then Chief senior reporter Matt McMullen released an article recently talking about the battle between QB Shane Buchel and Dustin Crum for that number three spot. That's Trace in Spanish, if you'd like to know. But right now, in case you need to be reminded, Mahomes is QB1, duh. Then veteran Chad Henney is still a lock as far as I'm concerned for QB2, though I think the longer term solution is to have a backup QB that has a more similar play style to Mahomes, which is why I think someone like Shane Buchel or Dustin Crum may eventually be the better solution for the long haul if the Chiefs staff feel they see the potential there. Anyway, here's a bit of info on both of these QBs. Shane Buchel signed with the Chiefs as a UDFA last offseason, beating out Anthony Gordon for the number three QB role last summer. And in the preseason, he went 37 of 55 for 422 yards and trace TDs. See, we learned it today. And then he joined the practice squad and later joined the active roster in November. He obviously has a few things going for him. He knows the system, the playbook, and his buddies with Patrick Mahomes. They train together, all that good stuff. But Dustin Crum is this year's UDFA added into the mix for some additional competition in the QB room and listen to his stats from last season at Kent State. He started 14 games and threw for 3,187 yards, 20 TDs and six picks. Huh. But listen to this. But he also racked up 703 yards and 12 touchdowns. And that's not a typo. 12 additional touchdowns on the freaking ground. So that's certainly impressive. This man can run for his life. But the question remains, who's going to edge out? For that number three spot to show they deserve to be on the roster or at the very least for now the practice squad will it be Buchel or the newcomer Dustin Crum stay tuned to find out at training camp this year which is forever away so please be patient and then we got to talk about a potential sleeper wide receiver for the Chiefs who recently got national media attention yesterday on Good Morning Football via a segment in which the hosts were picking which team they were more confident in this season, so far at least, between the Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills. And of course, almost all of them picked the Buffalo Bills, aside from the lone wolf himself, Peter Schrager. I think that's how you say his last name, and if it's not, please forgive me. But he spent the weekend in Kansas City, went to a Royals game, and got to spend some time with the Chiefs GM, Brett Veach. So maybe, just maybe, he's a little biased to KC because of his visit and connections to the city, but he's not out of his mind on this take with choosing the Chiefs over the Bills because the Chiefs own the Bills in the postseason and have been doing that for years. Anyway, he's going with the Chiefs because of their coaching staff, their knowledge, experience, and their quarterback, Patrick freaking Mahomes. And he also doesn't believe that losing one wide receiver is going to cause the Chiefs to implode and completely fall apart at the seams. He made sure to clarify, though, that Tyreek Hill was a generational talent, but they have plenty of weapons to choose from now. And you look at this list. All of these players can play. Sky Moore was a stud at Western Michigan. Josh Gordon has had big years. Justin Ross at Clemson was a guy from watch. Peter, who's Doris Fountain? Doris Fountain was there last year and is a guy they're high on. I like it. Who is Doris Fountain? <laughs> these guys play very nice with each other because when Peter answered the question, the guy responded saying, I like it. I like it. No, you don't. But anyway, it was still nice of you. Peter then goes on to talk about a standout receiver to him personally. But I'm going to go with the eighth man on this list. The eighth. Who is that bottom one on the second column, Sarah? Uh -huh. He was with the Buccaneers the last couple years on their practice squad out of the University of Pennsylvania. Justin Watson? Why are we talking about Justin Watson at 8 a.m.? <laughs> because the buzz out of minicamp on Justin Watson 
is that this guy can make an impact. And I believe he will not only make the team, I think he's going to play a difference in this thing. So Peter singled out Justin Watson and then said, I believe he will not only make the team, but he's going to play a difference in this thing. And Peter also said earlier in his take that Watson started to stand out during OTAs. And if you guys remember during my videos that I've covered or looking back at Arrowhead Pride's own Pete Sweeney's OTA notes, he mentioned Watson several times. On May 26th, Sweeney said the play of the day was made by wide receiver Justin Watson. Seriously, during 11s, Watson ran a corner route against McDuffie and Mahomes hit him perfectly in stride in the back right of the end zone. And then on June 2nd, Sweeney said, in one-on-ones, wide receiver Justin Watson popped again in my look, just a clean route runner, and he comes with a willingness to play special teams. Hello, Uncle Dave. And then a week later, June 9th, Sweeney noted him as a standout player during that practice. So that's three mentions of maybe the four media practice looks that were allowed during OTAs. So that's pretty freaking good and noteworthy, at least for now until the pads come on and training camp starts up. But remember that Mahomes was also asked about Watson during a presser after practice one day, and Mahomes said, Watson's been a pleasant surprise for me. That dude can roll. I remember when he came down to Texas and I threw with him the first day. I called Veach up like, wait, how fast is this guy? Because he's running so fast, I was late on my throws. So let's talk about why this is so intriguing. Peter Schrager just hung out with Brett Veach for at least a part of this weekend, and you know they talked about the Chiefs. So could Veach have mentioned some standouts to him thus far? Possibly yes. And while that's a bit speculative of me, let's talk a bit more with some facts on why I think Watson could indeed make this roster, even over Darius Fountain, who I recently did a video on if you want to check that out. But I made the case on why Darius Fountain has a decent chance of fighting for a roster spot, probably wide receiver five or more than likely six, purely because of his special teams experience. But He's also been very quiet this offseason at OTAs as far as standout players go. Meanwhile, Watson continues to turn heads. Mahomes speaks about him. And Watson also has plenty of special teams experience as well. From 2018 to 2020, when he was with the Buccaneers, Watson saw limited offensive snaps like Fountain, but played more than 50% of special team snaps in each season for the Bucs. He did have surgery on his knee in July of 2021 and basically did not play the 2021 season much at all, which is why he now found himself in Kansas City fighting for a roster spot. So yes, he's similar to Darius Fountain in a couple of ways, playing limited snaps on offense throughout his career, but a significant amount of special team snaps. But a couple differences here, he's a couple inches taller than Fountain, about a tenth of a second faster in his 40 time for what that's worth. But he also appears to be the better overall receiver as far as route running and making offensive plays happen and that matters because when injuries occur they're going to call on guys like Watson or Fountain to step up and contribute on offense and at least right now it seems like they could potentially trust Watson to do that over Fountain so there's why I think Watson may indeed have the edge over Fountain even though it's still a bit early in training camp will help decide that 100% my question to you all is what do you think about this about Justin Watson getting this national media attention meanwhile <laughs> Darius Fountain gets questioned, like, who is this guy? Who is Darius Fountain? So what do you guys think about Watson making the roster as wide receiver five or more likely wide receiver six? Because of his special teams contributions, yes, but also the splash he's been making in OTAs thus far, especially compared to Darius Fountain. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below, and let's articulately argue about it down there and from here i want to give a quick shout out to american 1020 who's back with a super thanks banger another 50 dollar bomb actually in which he says happiest of anniversaries to you and your beautiful wife sir so awesome to see thanks for sharing donation for some extra dessert which i will take i don't turn dessert down not in this household he is also praying for alex smith's daughter he also says congrats to mahomes and his new son not talking about Derek carr his other son and then he thanks me for the news and chief's content well you're freaking welcome you're the man thanks so much that is crazy also these guys commented on his comment and wanted in the video so here you guys go we are creeping up to 15,000 subs just around the corner which means my first ever live stream is going to happen, no excuses. So I hope you guys are stoked for that because I know I am. Also, how are you guys liking these daily videos? Give me some feedback. Is there anything you'd like to see more of, less of, different? 
let me know. I like to get feedback from those of you who listen this far into the video because y'all the real MVPs if you stay this far. So let me know in the comments down below and also mention the beard to potentially be featured in an upcoming video. Sub for more daily news like this and check out this video here, which is a well done update video on the Deshaun Watson situation and potential season long suspension that's coming from the NFL via microphone. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? <laughs>